wanted to take this opportunity um, to introduce uh, Sasmita. Um, come up. Uh, so this event, the planning for this event started like I want to say around April, um, and um, she's been one of the earliest people behind this event. Um, and she's going to be talking tonight about Internet of Things. Um, she is an IoT software engineer at Intel, where she develops UPM libraries for IoT sensors and samples for IoT developer kits using UPM sensor libraries. Um, she holds a bachelor in electrical and electronics um, and a master's in computer science. She also enjoys learning new technologies and she likes traveling, photography, and biking. Can I get a big round of applause? <laughs> Hi everyone. Can you all hear me properly? Yeah. Hi. First of all, I'm very much thankful to Katrina for uh, asking us help or she was very helpful. Actually, from Intel point of view, we were looking at this kind of hackathons or events so that more and more people can learn new technology and get uh, more popular with all this latest technology or into the IoT things, whatever it is. So we are very thankful to her. And uh, so um, Katrina in al already introduced me. Um, so I am Sashmita. I am an IoT software engineer at Intel. And uh, um, thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk about Internet of Things. So. I know like many of you might know about what is Internet of Things, but today I'll just briefly discuss about that. Um, so I'll talk about uh, like what is Internet of Things, why Internet of Things, hence what I'll refer to it as IoT, and how IoT works, application of IoT, and challenges with IoT, and future prospects of IoT. What is Internet of Things? Any volunteers you want to tell me? You can just tell me one sentence or even if you like one word or two words. Yes? It's the connection of all the devices and technology. Yes. <laughs> and I'm asking the wrong people because she is also an Internet of Things presentation today. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> In a layman term, I can define Internet of Things as something like I'm stepping to a room and start, but when I step inside, the lights turn on automatically, right? And when I want to, suppose I want to shop something online, I don't want to really open my laptop or my phone and do shop, right? So Amazon has something called dash button, and I can just simply click the dash button, my order is placed. And I will tell you many more applications and how Internet of Things work on my next slides. Um, so this is the technological term, like, um, so it's used to um, define many devices that they, devices communicate with each other over the network. So it also, like, this one is what I picked from the Center for Data and Innovation. It says that Internet of Things refers to the concept that Internet is no, lo no longer a global platform where humans can interact with each other. It is just, now Internet of Things is something where devices can communicate with each other. I really like that, so I put it. And this is why IoT. So why Internet of Things? As you can see, as people are, um, I was just thinking, like, I can just give you an example, like why Internet of Things? So. If you see, our everyday life is totally dependent on technologies. So day and night, we are using telephone, like uh, cell phones, uh, TV, smart TVs, and everything, right? So why IoT? It's simple. One line answer, if I can give, is it's the need. It's what we need, right? So uh, apart of that, it's like um, dynamic control of industry and your daily life. And second thing, what I can tell is. It's resource efficiency. How it is resource efficiency? I can give an example of Nest thermostat. So 
is just not only a device, a smart device, it, uh, there is some machine learning algorithm behind it. So it learns users' behavior and tries to um, what based on that, like for example, suppose uh, like two, three days, it sees like when I'm turning on the temperature and when I'm not at home, then it realizes that those things and perform a, a algorithm and then it just goes to a wave mode when I'm not there. And it also knows that what temperature I maintain and it tries to learn and fix that temperature. And it's very helpful because in this cold day and especially in Portland, where the weather is very cold, you don't want to go to your home and sit like shiveringly, right? You want, and if the machine learn by itself and it maintains the temperature, it's something awesome, right? So this is what I created, like why IoT, and this is the Internet of Things timeline. So like how the technology has evolved, like we started from job on, and there's some like Fitbit, and there is some many uh, devices from Nike as well, and like, and if you see the chart, so like, we don't know like where the future will take us, right? It's just a small idea that we are away from. Next is how IoT work. So, uh, how these devices work? So, uh, it's simply. What we see outside, we think that it's simply just a technology, right? It's not just a technology. There are like many devices uh, dependent on this, like uh, um, many things going behind it. Like for example, now I'm, suppose I'm just placing a device. So when you place a device, it won't work by itself, right? It has to discover itself. So it has to know to whom it is going to talk to, like to whom it is responding, right? So communication is important and then it needs to address it. So before addressing, there are some other features like identification. So it has to go uh, search for the IP address. So I'm just giving you a small example, like uh, it's just not only the technology, one technology we are looking at, there are many other dependents. Um, there is sensing. So like for example, uh, the temperature sensor. So if we are using a thermostat, we, I can give a small example, it's called just a temperature, where you can sense the temperature and actuators. So sense, actuators are just opposite of sen, uh, sensors, which uh, basically switching on the light is actuating. Um, and then um, uh, uh, embedded information processing, so it has, once the device discovers and then it uh, knows its identification, and then it senses and then it does the information processing and then you can see at the user point of view, like in your app or anything. Um, so this is a small example which I already mentioned, like for example if I am taking a Nest thermostat or anything, like there is a gateway which bridges the communication between these sensors and sends data to cloud. So cloud plays an important role because whatever this we are storing data, so whatever the machine, uh, whatever the machine learns over the time, it stores the data in the cloud, and then it generates a pattern, or does some machine learning algorithm, and then it realizes, okay, this person is not at home this time, so let me go to away mode, and like that, uh, those things happen. So cloud plays a vital role, and then you can access your phone. So you can set this temperature, whatever you want, that data goes to the cloud and then cloud communicates to the gateway, uh, to the sensor uh, through the gateway. Um, this I already discussed, but um, it's not only Nest, like where uh, it does the temperature detection and uh, then it uh, monitors and then it uh, sets the temperature. For example, there is something called Google Assistant. So basically, Google Assistant, even uh, people, they don't want to really use their phone also. So you just want to talk and tell that Google Assistant, like you tell, um, uh, by the way, in the Google Assistant, you can set your name by telling, uh, okay, Google, you can call me from, like, my name, Sashmita. So henceforth, it will remember my name, and it calls me through my name, Sashmita. And then if I ask Google, uh, Google now to set the uh, master room temperature to this, it will set. And another um, 
very uh, good thing what I noticed, I have Chromecast. So whenever I, uh, you don't want to see in your laptop or in a small phones, right? You always want to a bigger screen, right? So what I did, so what I did, I asked uh, Google, like I just did, okay Google, play Harry, po Harry Potter in my great room, in my master team. So it just played. Then what I did, I, I was just playing with it. Then I realized that I was, I asked it to skip for 10 minutes, it skipped. Then I asked for pause, it paused. So it was like, um, it is very convenient or the other way is like, you can think about lazy, but when you're, you're eating or you're sitting at a table, you don't want to look for a remote, right? So, and another thing is, you know, August log. So that also you can operate through your phone or you can operate through your watch, Apple Watch. So you can unlock the door, door through your Apple Watch. For example, if I'm not at home, suppose I'm gone from to, to my place, suppose I'm gone to India and few of my friends want to come over. I can give, I don't have to really hand over the real keys to them. I can send the virtual keys and they can come anytime they want. Uh, this is the same Alexa I have used where I can turn the lights on and off using Alexa, using the Philips Hue. Um, and this is one small example from Ultimate Coder Challenge. We Earlier this year we had an Ultimate Coder Challenge event. So here we selected five teams all over the world. One of the team, uh, they won this prize of 20k, but the theme we really like is like uh, in India is very poor country, right? So uh, the good thing about the project is like where uh, in rural areas in India where we have no access to doctors, how would any patient can communicate? They don't want to waste their time by traveling, right? So they came up with some idea like cognitive healthcare system, they just used our Edison and they just used like few sensors like uh, GSR, ECZ and then they were monitoring those from the patient and they were sending those data to the cloud using this few protocols like whatever protocols you can use but they were using MQTT and on the other hand the, the doctors can access this and they can suggest medicine and they can send messages to, uh, they can send SMS. So we really like this project so they won the prize and uh, I have few more minutes I will just quickly go over. So uh, IoT is not simple. There are so many things to take care of when anybody is creating any Internet of Things project because privacy is very important. So uh, uh, the manufacturers have been very uh, keen about users' privacy and uh, help them block and uh, detect and block the malicious activity. So security, interoperability, you see there are many devices in the market. So you don't want to have one app for each device, right? So that's why interoperability plays a main role because manufacturer, so they are coming up with a single standard where you can have multiple devices, but all the devices use a single standard. So you can just use one single app and they all can communicate. Um, so this is the IoTV framework, which is not yet released, but this will come soon. So this is the one single framework. It is based on the open consortium interconnect consortium. So the single, if this single framework is agreed by Intel, Microsoft and Qualcomm, so this standard will be released soon. I'm not going into details. Um, so I'll just uh, skip this one. Um, and these are some of the Intel products we have. So uh, we have this all these products which will help you to build Internet of Things projects. So we have today Intel Edison which has a dual core atom processor and it has which clocks around 500 megahertz. It has 1 gig of RAM and 4 gig of flash and it also has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. So we are looking forward to your process. And recently we launched Joule. What is the difference between Intel Edison and Joule? Joule has like quad core processor. It has 4 gig of RAM and 8 gig of flash. It has, the best thing is it has graphic processing unit and it clocks around 1.5 gigahertz. So, so we have today Intel Edison with starter kit for all of you. So those who want to do any projects. Yeah, that's it. I'll stop it here. Thank you. Yeah.